Hey everyone and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, I'll be talking about the potential for the worst heat wave of the summer here across parts of the United States. This will bring excessive heat. In addition to this, it could even bring a little bit of severe weather. I'll be giving the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this weather forecast. But let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today, which as of right now, there isn't actually that much happening. It's been fairly dry across much of the country due to a very elongated cold front that moved through parts of even Texas and the Southern Plains and even through the Southeast United States. But there is still a low pressure system that is centered back over in parts of the Northern Ohio Valley. And this will actually bring the risk later today for at least some severe weather for those that are along the East Coast. So there's actually going to be a chance for at least some severe weather later today with damaging winds and maybe a little bit of large hail being our main concerns and maybe a couple tornadoes. And we'll be talking about more on this later in this forecast. And then further back up to the North, it's been fairly dry across much of the northern and central plains. In fact, most of the Great Plains has been dry, including the Midwest as well as of today. It's pretty sunny over there, not a whole lot of cloud cover as long as you're pretty much north and west of Chicago. There's some thin layer of clouds that is south of you, but overall, again, no rain is really expected there today. What we're going to be watching for next is a low pressure system coming out of Canada. This will dip down and bring the potential for at least some isolated severe weather as we go into tomorrow and as well as into Thursday. So we have a couple of days of severe weather weather to watch for for parts of the Midwest and as well as back into parts of like Michigan and maybe even the Northern Ohio Valley. And we'll discuss more details on this severe weather event later in this forecast, so make sure you stay tuned. All right, let's talk more about the jet stream pattern in the United States and also discuss what this actually means for the heat wave that is going to be impacting the country over the next 7 to 14 days, because it's going to be a pretty intense heat wave. It's going to last multiple days, and it's going to impact most likely a fairly large chunk of the United States, bringing relentless heat and excessive heat to a large chunk of the country. So so beginning with today, we have a high pressure system that's located well back out here to the west. That's where our heat dome is located. We have this dip in the jet stream, which is allowing for some cooler air to usher into other areas that have not seen cooler air in quite a while, including parts of even North Texas. When I say North Texas, I'm talking about like Dallas, Fort Worth. Those areas like DFW, they've been above 100 degrees at, at least some point during the day, every day for the last three weeks. Yesterday was the first time that they were below 100 degrees for a high temperature. So crazy stuff there. And by the way, it was 99 degrees. Not much of a cool down, but it's something. But overall, again, we are seeing some cooler weather right now, but it's not going to last forever. Unfortunately, that heat dome is going to start to build in. So as we go into Wednesday and Thursday, notice this intense jet stream that's going to dip down into parts of the Midwest. This is a pretty strong upper level winds for sure, and the low pressure system would be located here. Our heat dome will begin to move again back to the east. It's going to start migrating to the east, and unfortunately, it's going to be impacting a very large chunk of the United States. And this isn't the worst it's going to get, by the way. It's going to get much larger as we go closer of the weekend but this is thursday again we have a low pressure system here this will bring a risk for maybe some severe weather to the northeast but as of right now the risk is fairly isolated at this time and as we go into friday and the saturday notice where this heat dome goes it is dominating across a large chunk of the great plains and even into parts of the midwest and as well as in the gulf coast the southeast it's pretty much covering anywhere in this area that is where this heat dome will start to build and that's going to increase the heat in this area bringing that heat wave to a pretty large chunk of the united states including again the midwest and even maybe Maybe the northern plains look at this as we go into sunday into monday the jet stream is way up here to the north and west and this is where we're going to be watching for maybe some showers and storms nowhere near the central united states or the east coast so this heat dome is going to dominate across a very large chunk of the united states very intense heat dome that will be bringing the heat wave to the united states in addition to this it's not going to help us in terms of precipitation because of this upper level disturbance it's overall going to make it so that we're not really going to see a whole lot of rain here across a large chunk of the united states this is going the next tuesday into wednesday Wednesday, things get a lot more uncertain past really Monday or Tuesday of next week, but the jet stream might start to dip again, and that would allow for the heat dome to go back further to the south, but at this time, it does at least look like by the late weekend, we'll see some impacts from that heat wave back up into parts like the Midwest and maybe even in the Northern Plains, which is a little bit rare for this time of the year. We don't usually don't see them go that far off to the north. Now, next up is the temperature anomalies, and this shows us above and below average temperatures across the United States. Blue is representing below average temperatures, and as of today, we are seeing below average temperatures across a pretty nice little chunk of the country from basically the Ohio Valley and the Midwest back into Southern Plains. Elsewhere, there is definitely some heat ongoing outside of that region, and that's all associated, by the way, with this low pressure system with those strong northerly winds coming out of Canada. That is allowing for some cooler weather, even though it's not very cold. It is at least some cooler weather here in the United States. Once we go through Thursday and Friday, that low pressure system that'll be moving through parts of the Midwest and as well as into the Ohio Valley will bring some cooler weather again, so you will have some relief. Don't worry, the heat wave is not here yet, but once 
once we get to the weekend, unfortunately, that heat dome is going to build quickly. Look at this heat here. We could be talking about record-breaking temperatures, especially in the center of this, back near Iowa and Nebraska, with temperatures perhaps 10, 15, 20 degrees above average. So it'll be very hot there. Sunday into Monday, this heat dome intensifies. It's going to be very strong. And then eventually going to next week, that moves to the east with some cooler weather likely returning sometime mid to late next week. And that's what we're looking at right now in terms of the heat wave. Now, the Climate Prediction Center has issued their own forecast ahead of this massive heat wave and they've essentially said this heat is going nowhere as of right now they are forecasting above average temperatures likely at least across a very large chunk of the united states that includes anywhere in the orange red or even maroon shaded areas all this area is going to be looking at the potential for above average temperatures sometime between sunday and thursday of next week that's from the 20th to the 24th so keep that in the back of your head again this does not mean every single day will be above average but overall during this time frame it's more likely than not we'll be talking about above average temperatures and then even past that from the 22nd to the 28th of August, we are still looking at above average temperatures for an even larger chunk of the United States. More likely than not for the Gulf Coast as that heat dome again dips further back down to the south. That'll start to allow for that heat to kind of retreat back further to the south. And then we're looking at maybe some cooler weather back up to the north and maybe like the Midwest. Overall precipitation, it's pretty much like this. It, it, this goes hand in hand. So when we have above average temperatures, we usually have below average precipitation. That goes most of the time, at least for the United States. And then you can see here, this is where we'll be looking at below average precipitation and above average precipitation back over here to the west in the western tier of the united states where there will be a low pressure system there as we get closer to the weekend allowing for some precipitation and then looking at the 22nd to the 28th so again august 22nd to 28th we are looking at still below average precipitation more likely than not across much of the ohio valley and the mississippi valley and then back over in the western tier of the united states we are looking at above average precipitation and then it's neutral chances anywhere else in that white shaded region as of right now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next several days and we'll begin with today which is tossing trampolines on tacos tuesday we do currently have a slight risk of severe weather back in the mid-atlantic region and as well as a marginal risk that goes from new york all the way back through florida main concerns for today are damaging winds with some sporadic hail and then also a low end chance for an isolated tornado back over in western new york northern pennsylvania and as well as along the east coast from north carolina back through southern new england and cape cod overall for the timing today we are going to be watching for storms to fire up around lunchtime if not just after that these will quickly become severe with a chance for damaging winds but mainly the threat for damaging winds up to 65 miles per hour there might be a brief tornado out of one of these but overall the concern for that is on the lower side of things by six to seven o'clock most of the storm activity is in either eastern north carolina eastern virginia maybe southern maryland or it's off the coast eventually going into the late evening hours storms moving closer to the southern new england area a bit more of a conditional risk up there but if any storms do end up firing up up there there is a chance for some damaging winds and maybe an isolated tornado and then going into wacky weather wednesday another slight risk of severe weather and marginal risk back up into parts of the northern plains this would be our 71st straight day in a row of a slight risk or greater of severe weather by the way so we have a very long streak going it's the longest streak ever recorded in history from the storm prediction center main concern is damaging winds and some large hail notice there'll be a line of storms during like the late afternoon early evening hours this will be pushing through wisconsin and uh, the upper michigan peninsula by 12 o'clock those storms moving to the east by six o'clock in the morning we'll be watching for that line of storms to continue to roll through parts to the midwest and michigan and we'll be watching for at least some isolated damaging winds out of that and again that'll be in the morning hours for those near the chicago suburbs and then heading into tossing trampolines on tall trees thursday there's one more marginal threat of severe weather and this is the only risk right now in the united states main concern would be damaging winds across those areas thank you so much for watching make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're not already